So, Mixed Mag, I've got the series of articles they're putting out, I think, to tie in with maybe the Christmas thing, is the advent calendar. I'm not too sure, but it's a little article. Let's have a read of it. I haven't really checked it out, but I thought the headline was pretty interesting. Let's have a read and see what we think of this. The article from Mixed Mag titled, How Instagram Has Changed DJ Culture, which I don't know, like, it has. I'm, no, I'm still trying to, I'm still gra- grappling with it, actually trying to work out what works best for me because I've always found that the Instagram, the DJ Instagram thing works when you're like pretty established and you maybe you might have a full crowd in front of you and you also might have some hangers on you know some you know groupies hanging around the dj booth who could help you out by doing a video but when you're on your own playing in the pub with like 10 people in it it's quite hard to like you know prop the camera up and make yourself look like armin van buren do you know what i mean so it gets a bit redundant doing it that way you could there's only so many pictures or videos of the mixer you can take before people start thinking why aren't you pointing that thing upwards <laughs> why aren't you pointing at the dance floor because no one there <laughs> but anyway let's continue with this article how to gamma change dj culture uh, work camera flash how dj cameras have changed dj culture since launching in 2010 instagram has had a disruptive impact on dance music wow it's been a decade of instagram madness isn't it 2010s are almost over in case you somehow missed it amidst the um engorged list engorged list okay i don't know what that is list season and effective long reads akin to this with them we leave behind various post future um genres Post future, post genres, iron, ironic or not ironic, fashion trends, and hopefully a Tory government. Why does everyone hate the? Can you? Is that a way to kind of really mess up a dinner party? Imagine just saying you voted Tory. Imagine saying you're a Tory in and out. Imagine saying you like that pretty Patel woman. Is it pretty? Pretty, pretty Patel is your, is your stepmom or something? Would you get kicked out of the house party if you did that? Maybe, innit? Bloody hell. Being a Tory in, in the UK is hard. Anyway, a deluge of launches, innovations, and cultural in- renovations have emerged this decade, including Instagram, which popped up in late 2010 and has spent the ensuing nine years wrapping society in multiple ways. Our newfangled I gram, therefore I am motto has led to the birth of influencers, meme accounts, and URL stand fandoms from cultural hotspots and more excitedly remote locations, plus an onslaught of multi hyphenate artists. Much to the delight of brands, naturally. Instagram has grown to become a lucrative tool for money-making means across the creative industries. These days, DJs and producers can essentially market PR and create editorial content all via their phones. Career booths from a packed tour calendar to more press coverage to wider audiences are available to them if they navigate the platform with what would be deemed a successful approach. To, to some, it comes naturally. For others, it's a result of willing of a wily planning driven by an increasing acceptance that it isn't just music that does a talking of course and i think you've seen that happening a lot in the stand-up world i think i always ascribe i always kind of talk about stand-up because of course i listen to a lot of stand-up comedy and i will hopefully in the future maybe next week do my first stand-up comedy set sometime soon um next week i'm gonna do i'm gonna put out the new reefer or in the universe i have to do it next week and not be an absolute pussy but i take a lot of influence from it because i think they have also been grippling or wrestling with the idea of self-promotion because in a comedy world it's probably looked down upon more so in the maybe electronic music world self-promotion is the big thing people are all about the jokes all about the stand-up or they they kind of wear the fact that they've been in it 10 years plus on their sleeve, they tattoo it on their chest, they put it on their hat, they will tattoo it on their face, like six nine tattoo or something. Do you know what I mean? Like they're really proud of the fact that the years they put in. So the idea of circumventing it or quote unquote cheating by posting stuff on social media isn't a way to go. Now it's sort of changed. I think a lot of comedians are realizing that if you've got 10 years in the game, it's only gonna add to your appeal if you're also able to promote yourself and the fact that you've been in the game for so long via social media. You're sort of leaving money on the table by not using it. Um the electronic music world i've kind of seen a weird divide i think for the most part it's weird to judge because for the most part the most successful djs the ones that are making the most money like commercially are usually the ones that are pretty heavy on social as well the ones that are possibly the the ones that are the cult favorites or the ones that are the djs dj with that kind of person they're not that heavy on social media like i think of someone like a dj hell right i don't think he's going to be posting his arms out wide um in front of a dj crowd anytime soon but he's well respected in, in the in the dj circles someone like a good jansen's a similar example i don't think he posts um peggy goo type videos on on instagram of, of, of that like so it's quite hard for up and coming djs to judge and it's quite hard also for other people to compare themselves against because where do you fall do you fall in the DJ hell line where you're going to get booked regardless of your leg because it's based, mostly based on your legacy? Or do you go full frontal and quote unquote 
really whore yourself out on social media and really tr- throw it in people's face remind them day in day out that you're a dj you're a dj you make music you buy vinyl you like fashion you're a dj you're a dj how how often do you do that before it gets too much similar to like people that work out right um gym workout people like how far do you have to go until you start to feel cringe or is it more of a question of like it doesn't matter how far you do it the way the algorithm works people are not going to see every post that you upload so you're and plus you're not trying to convince your friends that you're a dj you're trying to put it out there in order to kind of gain new business i'd assume that's why you're doing it right i'd assume most people that are posting on social especially dj wise are doing it because they want to gain get get some new leads hopefully um put out the image that they're you know that they're a big person in the scene um the article continues um take the rise of peggy Goo, huh? just spoke about her now for example but it playing be it playing to the crowds adoring swaving fans designing clothes either collaborative or for her label karen kicking back wearing designer clothes in selfies or front row at fashion week she's created her feet to portray peggy Goo trademark the brand in order to offer a desirable content and aspiring uh, inspirational appeal for both her fans and a brand she chooses to work with on october 2018 peggy teamed up with instagram for a behind the scenes style video hosted on the platform's official feed and filmed in amsterdam during adad in a move that highlights her interest to do more and share more via the platform but the thing with peggy Goo that's awesome is that she's an actual she's 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 about this life it seems like from what i've seen of her on social she actually produces music She's obviously a classically trained pianist, you know, as most Asian people are. She's a fucking boss on the piano, uh, which obviously will translate very well to the um, electronic music scene. I'm pretty sure she mentioned in the interview that her parents are quite musically inclined too, which is great. Um, Korean background, you know, raised up in, or kind of, you know, come to prominence in London and Berlin. So loads of interesting influences there. And just she just doesn't seem, she just seems unashamed when it comes to personal social. She's very... A matter of fact about it sort of similar to like a style bubble was her name style bubble what's her name the asian girl that uh, from london that i find really annoying but it's really good on social media but just she's really good i think there's a they, they need, there's a certain personality that lends itself to being really self-promotional or wise on social and i think she's perfect for it what's this video about her on instagram i didn't see this actually so i've got a link to it so this is a video of her at the with instagram film what is it behind the scenes look at what she does okay uh, during ade for last year Let's see what this sounds like. Oh, I love it. I love her outfit. Let's see. Last week, Peggy. Oh, let's just pause that. Oop, I'm sorry. Let me go back there and read what it says here. So Peggy Goo. I love the outfit. Last weekend, pe- DJ and producer Peggy Goo performed for the second time at the Amsterdam dance event, which I'm been told is a very beneficial place to go to if you want to do some business can make some contacts with that sort of malarkey and network and do that whole smooching stuff which is great i would probably like to go to amsterdam for the first time ever to go to deck mantle but you know ade i'm not i'm not uh, i'm not against it if anyone from out there from ade is watching send man an invite uh it's continuous here so looking out into the river somewhere growing up career i used to listen to a lot of k-pop i listened to edm i, like I listened to hip-hop I was always interested in music, you know. I was one of those kids like putting the walk. Yeah, this is very hard to do if you're a DJ that really is about this life and you don't want to be that self promotion person. Because I'm sure behind the scenes, I'm sure she's probably aware of this. Other DJs are probably talking quite negative about it, which is weird, right? Because do you remember when Seth, um, what's Seth Chuckster? When Richie Horton was doing, you know, his James Murphy phase and he was doing everything under the sun, collaborating, making machines, modular machines, making mixers this and that doing the sake thing like he was all over the place right was there any backlash behind what he was doing i don't think there was really was there i don't know maybe social media wasn't around as it is i wasn't as prevalent as it was back then maybe i'm not too sure but he was heavy in it and he was around all the ogs who were just constantly like you know i'd say richie horton was that era around you know richie richie horton the same era as maybe a, a luciano and a ricardo de lobos right even though they're probably not the same musical um taste buds and stuff and what they play but they're the same kind of generation. And you would never see Luciano or Ricardo Villalobos doing any of that sort of extra stuff that Richie Hoyt was doing, right? They're obviously quite charismatic behind the DJ booth and are quintessential DJ rock stars, but they're very much about the music and about DJing only. That's all they do. And then Richie Hoyt was flying around doing this other stuff. And I didn't feel that there was any pushback. And I even remember him sitting down with some restaurateur guy and having this really um, self-indulgent conversation about how food and music, are. The, you know, those kind of conversations... Uh, where they're sort of like both wanking each other off which is you know i'm a big fan of it i love richie horton he's, he's one of my heroes but i don't know man i feel quite cringe watching this but then i might also imagine you know why should you if i felt all right watching 
Richard Horton sit down with some restaurateur for an hour talking about how, you know, bloody sushi is the same as mixing. Come in and my, my pants, you know, like, and they're dancing around. But moving back to London... As amazing as it must be to... As, it must, as, it must be to, as, as amazing as it must be to be Peggy Goo, it also must be quite daunting knowing that every time you walk into a room, people are talking about you, about how you're promoting, especially with that video of her standing next to a Porsche and... It's a bit like, oh man, the, like she's gone. But I don't know if this is a wise thing to do. Like when you start in your career, just to go full pelt, take, say yes to all the promotions, all the brand endorsements. And then once you start getting a bit older and the brand endorsement starts to kind of wane, because obviously naturally they're only doing it now because she's a fresh faced, attractive young Asian woman. But once she gets a bit older, we know how discriminatory these entertainment fields are, especially with women when they get older they're going to start easing off, right, on the brand endorsements that they give. I, I'd imagine so, right? I don't know. Does Nina Kravitz get a lot more deals? I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Maybe I'm talking out of hand, but I know in Hollywood, generally women tend to, like, get less roles or the older they get, whereas men is the opposite way, right? But also with men too, brand endorsements, no one's going to, no one's going to give, no, no youth-led brand is going to, you know, endorse Richie Horton for stuff because he's not about that life, innit? You'll rather go to the younger kids who are, doing the kind of hands in the air stuff like the Michael Beebe's and shit, right? I'd imagine so, but I don't know. It got me into house and techno scene. I never heard music like that in my life before. I also like how open she is about stuff, right? She discovered stuff recently and just got obsessed by it. She doesn't make up this story that, oh yeah, my dad was, you know, had had a EP on hard wax back in the day. You know, those kind of, Damn story people always make up that you know obviously lies you just like say look i think she mentioned something about her parents being music inclined but it had nothing to do with her electronic music career they went there to be a classically trained pianist and she went off and did her own thing she dropped out of uni and just started you know immersing herself in the culture um i like how honest she is about that sort of stuff anyway let's go back to the article this is this is a bit boring in it really to watch this but you can check this out yourself let's go back to the article and we can go from there um for DJs on the rise, your platform and the brands that prioritize Instagram can help to further their career thanks to social media's viral potential, which allows both the artists and their posts to be quickly shared and viewed by a global scale, relatively short periods of time. Uh, but by projecting the inside of a club to the world, and the, an inverse effect is happening with some DJs adapting sets to appeal beyond the dance floor. Oh, okay, subtlety, subtlety doesn't make for a snippet likely to gain much attraction. So doing... So dueling out bangers or doling out bangers to appeal to videographers as well as a crowd is clinical route to rise to up the algorithm. I never thought about that really, innit? Yeah, true, because I guess if you're going to mix, this is the thing I've always wondered, actually, when you're mixing something, what else? yeah, when you're doing a mix and you're playing in front of a crowd and you've got an Instagram thing you want to post, when you decide to do it, do you do it when you're about to do a really tight mix? Because when, when I'm in the tight, when I want to do a tight mix, I'm very much in the zone. I'm concentrating. I'm making sure that I'm not clanging. I'm making sure I got the EQs right. That I'm hearing the monitors okay. I'm making sure that whatever I'm mixing, people are starting to like, and they're not. It's not kind of clearing the dance floor, right? You're not really trying to focus on the camera. You're not trying to give your finger. And you're not mixing. It's hard to do at the same time unless you get one of those braces that you wear. So I'd imagine most DJs are probably giving the phone to somebody and then saying and then kind of selecting a song that's a banger and then telling them, pointing to them when to start recording and then starting to get their hands in the air, right? Like how that DJ Alicia does, who I'm a, I'm a fan of, but she's a bit cringe when it comes on social online. I'm sure she's aware of it, but, you know, she has to do what she has to do. But this DJ um, that I follow on Twitter is sort of similar. And I guess this is what people are trying... And again, you can hate as much as you want, but she's got an actual excellent EP out there. should actually check out Alyssa that I like I don't even pronounce her name is it Alyssa or Alicia I'm not sure if you pronounce it but I, I like her she's, she seems pretty sound and she's always kind of got some always some fun opinions on your social but this girl um, she posts a lot of videos of her arms out wide it was quite funny it's a, it's a bit of it's a kind of it's, it's, it's basically a meme right so this girl here she's got a, pitch, a post of her playing at 338 free, free um, there we go put this up on the screen for you guys to check out <laughs> Yeah, she's doing. See those hands in there? So that sort, you know, so that sort of stuff. So what you, so do you have to give somebody the phone when that's playing? Like, there's no other, you know, because how do you know, like when you're starting to mess around the field, someone's, someone's already got the phone or do you get your friend to just record you for ages and then when you go back home, you just start clipping and cutting it up. I don't know, but it's interesting, isn't it? Because she's clearly got, her friend's clearly got the, the phone right when it's about to drop. And then... You know what I mean? You're going to have to do that sort of stuff, which is hard. 
And again, this only works when you're playing in an amazing place like 338 and you're a really, you know, you're on the rise sort of DJ like Alyssa. Like if you're like me and you're playing in bars and pubs, you know, in front of people that are eating burgers and, you know, watching the rugby, you know, it's a bit difficult to have these videos out there on social. It continues. Um, let's go back to the article. That um, That's not to say that these viral moments are always forced. There has been... Uh, many positive outcomes arising from clips of killer DJs wholeheartedly letting loose. A samurai co-founder of Manchester label Club Night Swing Ting offered his take. He suggests that while there can be some pressure to create them, they can have both the creators of other great acts, calling them a mix of both force and positivity, of both forcing and positive rediscovery. Okay, cool. Plus, this guy, um, Swing Ting, says, no, what's his, guy, what's his name? Uh, Samurai says the following. Plus, it's cool to be able to see footage from sets that you maybe didn't see previously from around the world. This also means that gatekeepers have to take notice of the DJ or promotion that's doing their thing regardless. For example, an amazing DJ doesn't just remain a local secret anymore. That's true. Um, that's part of the reason how I discovered a lot of my songs, a lot of my tunes, a lot of my heroes. I used to always, I've told you before in the beginning, when I used to, when I really got into Ricardo Villalobos, I'd spend every weekend basically following his career, following his basically gigs on RA and then going on um, YouTube and typing in his name and whatever venue we played in and then doing like upload date, kind of, you know, the search history. And then um, I'd basically try and find clips of people recording his sets in the clubs. And usually they were recording his sets mostly because of tune ideas. But some of the times I'll be able to get the song and kind of Shazam it while listening to it on my laptop. So a lot of, those communic a lot of the communication through clubs I got was through those little clips. So I'd imagine it would do the same for a DJ, right? Imagine if a, if a clip you got goes viral on like a Tifa Techno Twitter handle page or one of those other meme accounts on social media, on Instagram specifically, that would, that would take you from hero to zero really, really quickly. So I'm, I'm all for it, man. Um, former Mix Mag manager, former Mix Mag, Mix Mag Maga, Okay, Hover Sounds co-founder and certified international star Shereel, uh is one of those amazing DJs who blew up at the beginning of the year thanks to a virus success of Boiler Room stream revealing her talents behind the decks. So of course, yeah, that's the one that the guy pulled out a song up for her, right? The tune and she got pissed. She's since signed to an agency and played high-profile gigs across Europe and the US and drawn attention for likes of Virgil Abloh who clocked the post circling on social media and reached out and Cheryl Hover Sounds cohort Narnia. Okay, what's what's this clip? Is this the clip that they've got on here? What's this clip? Some people reached out. What did we shout about? What did Virgil reach out to about? Okay, here it is, right? So this is the clip, I think. Okay, cool. I don't want to get taken off, but that's the basic clip. You basically seen it of her going crazy behind her decks having fun. Big up Shereel. Um and Narnia is another name utilizing the platform to both document her career movements also while while also being, you know, social. Since her career kickoff, she's used her Instagram as a blog or portfolio of sorts to document her career moments or projects she's proud of. It's a good form of self-promotion, she said. If you want to see what someone's up to, like where is Nanya playing next, who's on the next radio show, who's going to be released on label, you know the DJ and artist who are most likely to use the platform. So I see her. There's her Instagram there. What's her name? Nanya. I'm not sure who Nanya is. Who's Nanya? Nanya, Nanya, who's this person? In sessions with Nanya. Uh, okay, cool. A girl that's probably playing some cool club music, yeah? Do your thing. Let's continue with the article here. Ba, 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 ba. It's a sentiment that's bang face weekend the founder James and Acid agrees with. Instagram almost fully replaced the old forms of promo like flyers and posters and forums. The main the aim is still the same to spread the word organically. Social media generally works well for music events because people plan most of their social time there. If a mashup of memes, throwback, nostalgic, indicing, rave shots and colourful promotion videos are your jam, look no further than Banfax's profile. The festival's grid is filled with smartly curated, wholly on brand series of images. Da, da, da. Okay, cool. We go there. There's a clear method to madness, even Bank Face case. This all follows the logical pattern. Each event will begin with a lineup info, then the fans address theme, and which can go in many directions. Then you have the photos and videos and set recordings for the parties. But it's not for everyone. It shouldn't have to be. You don't need to be. You don't need to be what? Um, you don't need an article to tell you that. Take media-based producer Ski Mask, who's doing more than fine. I can, f I, I think we can all agree. Receiving universal acclaim for his latest album, Compro, which I can recommend you check out. I saw Ski Mask actually play uh, in Mixed Garage actually a few weeks ago. That was really good, including placing 2018 best album list on Pitchfork, RA, in fact, and, and our own. But even he sometimes feels the pressure. Um, does he feel the pressure, Ski Mask? Okay, fair enough, man. Nowadays, as an artist, he says you only need to look around one ar around once, and you see 99% of the other producers or DJs using platforms like Insta, um, because it makes you think that it's necessary to important to succeed. Of course, like I said, cult heroes like Gerd Jansen and 
DJ Hell aren't using Instagram as much as, you know, a, a Peggy Goo and a Nasty is. But, you know, I think for the up-and-coming DJ, you probably have to just decide where you want to go. I think that's the whole premise of this article. Where do you want to be? Do you want to be Armin Van Buren? Do you want to be, um, you know, Carl Cox and stuff? Then maybe you might have to utilize Instagram in a different way. If you just want to be a cult favorite and have the ability to tour all your favorite clubs that might not necessarily be the, you know, arenas or stadiums or massive festivals that somebody like Amelia Lenz does, then probably don't do that sort of stuff. But if you want to be Amelia Lenz, you have to look at her Instagram and see how social she is, see how active she's on social, and just have to ramp it up the same way. It based in your own way, of course, but you have to do that. And you know, it's the only way to do it. You can't I don't I don't like the thing of like pointing and hating at those people. When you kind of want that success yourself, I think you have to decide what you want and then kind of work backwards, I would imagine. Um, so he says, this schema says, um, schema cites the example of artist Helena Hoof as a good example for those who still cultivate a huge fan base and attract mass crowds despite the lack of online presence, admiring her focus on her craft and interest away from social media. Elsewhere, the rise of phones on the dance floor debate might have come old man shouts at the clouds for talking point. Duh, duh, duh. This transpires in various forms for the dazzle, the camera flash. Okay. It's a pretty long article and it's keep going on and on and on and on and on. What, what, what's, what, what's the conclusion here at the end? Let's see. Da, da, da. Okay, it goes without saying that Instagram will continue to play a part on the dance music world with and without visible likes well into the 2020s. Well, at least until we all hop on the next platform. Um, but despite this impact, social media does have a unsearchable grip on dance music. Although there are obvious bonuses for those that navigate the, and uh, navigate with care and keep their mental health in check while engaging with pl platforms like Instagram, there is still successful artists who reject the online presence. Who is that? They got here in the article, they rejected. Okay, Neil's fam. If I clock myself on social media too much, I call someone or throw myself into editing emails or DJing. We really need to clock how much time we're spending on social media and do something about it if we think it's affecting us mentally, which is Nanya says, which I agree with. I think the idea that people do, I think I remember, I think I heard Brendan Shaw from Fire the Kids say he kind of, I know Joe Rogan does the same sort of thing. He just posts and dumps, which is what I do. I just post and dump. I don't really go on my discovery page. I don't really care for people's feeds. I just post what I post and keep it moving, respond to my DMs, respond to my comments, and that's it. Uh, I know Brendan Shaw does this thing where he posts something on social and then delete the app and then have somebody else kind of go through the comments for him um, and delete anything that's not that's not cool, whatever it may be. But I think that's a bit ag aggressive. So, like, you know, you should be able to go to a pub and not drink if you don't want to drink. You don't have to, like, you know, re reject all places that sell alcohol. It's a bit much. You should have some kind of self-control. And again, this is only about self-control, really. The phones. I don't have notifications, which kind of stops and abates things. I don't have to. I have to open things specifically. But again, I think like this. Um, Naina, 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 girl mentioned. Um, if you're creative, it probably is great to probably throw yourself into a creative pursuit. The more time you're spending looking at other people, you should be spending time honing your own craft. Now, that's why I get to the point of it, like hating on people like Peggy Goo and Amelia Lenz and stuff who are smashing social and doing it without any kind of, you know, shame and being quite forthright about it. You just have to let them do it. And if you want to do something similar, do it yourself. But you don't point fingers. Instead, just create and try and make a way for yourself outside of that arena if, you know, if that's not for you. Um, she continues, uh, this clout gen is a mad, mad time for us. Uh, post your shit that you're proud about but don't watch the numbers remember you're doing it for yourself not validation from others yeah so good advice from um this nanya girl article is written by jasmine ken smith it's called work camera flash and instagram has changed the future i'll i'll put it in the, um, in the show notes for you guys to check out yourselves and read but it's a really cool and informative uh blog post i thought you should check out for all the you dj freaks out there like myself